just about ate it. Thank you all for coming. That would have been an impressive intro if I would have fell right in my butt right up here in front of everybody. So a little slippery for everybody that comes after me here. Um, so John Stecker, uh, head of innovation here at Barclays, want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, thank you for all the folks that are on the webcast as well, um, either at 1CP or the other Barclays sites or upstairs uh, checking the place out. So overall, uh, this is about the 10 groups that came through, the 10 companies that came through the actual Lots of good echo up there. Um, this is uh, about the 10 companies that came through the accelerator. They should be very proud of themselves with all that they accomplished in the 13 weeks that they've been here. They've really put in a heck of a lot of time, um, as well have a lot of other people. And that's mainly what I wanted to just say thanks for the 100 plus mentors that we had come in from outside, from the community, from kind of the FinTech ecosystem uh, here in London, as well as across the world. Thank you very much for all of that. Um, thank you as well to the 100 plus folks from Barclays that uh, also volunteered and helped kind of shape these businesses. So overall, great participation, uh, very thankful. Hopefully it goes on well after we kind of get started here, or well after the program wraps up as well. So just quick summary here on kind of like the, or quick overview of the Barclays Accelerator powered by Techstars. This is one of the big flagship programs that we run inside of the firm. Um, as you can see from the turnout, uh, very proud of it, uh, very proud of the impact that it has here in London. Um, the London program by far is the one that gets the best turnout. Uh, I think we had 600 plus applicants this year um, for, the t or for the 10 slots that we actually had open. So the competition is very high to actually get into the program. Um, so it speaks a lot for the folks and the founders and their teams that are here today about the quality of companies that they are. Um, and hopefully in the 13 weeks, they become a lot better than what they were before. So as part of getting better, um, I think one of the things, you know, from the past, uh, if you look at all of the cohorts that have gone through and you do their mark to market, um, you know, there's well over 400 some odd million dollars worth of valuation that's been created by those companies that have come through the accelerator in the past, which is spectacular. Uh, hopefully this group will triple that. I'm not holding anybody accountable for it, but that is uh, what I'm hoping uh, for all out of you guys. Um, beyond that, right? Outside of all the uh, like the valuation that's created, I think one of the biggest things that comes out of all these programs is the network that you make. So any founder, any good company out there, anybody working in a corporation will tell you is like half of the stuff that they actually get done on a daily basis is because of the network that they have around them. And I think that's one of the biggest things that this program creates is a really powerful network of people that you can always call on. And it doesn't matter if you're raising funds, if you're winding your company down, or if you're starting a new company, the people that you meet here are very important for the future of what you're gonna do. So with that, that, I will hand it over to Chris to come up and give a quick intro from the Techstars side, and then we'll get into the pitches in the program. So thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Chris Adelsbach. Managing Director at Techstars, and welcome to the fifth Barclays Accelerator powered by Techstars. Okay, I think most people here recognize this, this graph here. So this was drafted by a prominent VC investor and Techstars mentor called Mark Sister. Lines, not dots. What it basically means is that enterprise or investors make decisions based on progress over time. A bank will not invest, or a bank won't partner with a fintech based on one good meeting. And a VC will not invest in any startup, let alone a fintech, based on one good meeting. It's based on promise and delivery. It's progress over time. It's ultimately about pattern recognition. It's lines and not dots. And this program is all about the lines. So we start by leveraging two powerful networks. The first network, Techstars, with its with its portfolio of 1,300 companies across 168 countries. It is the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. The second network, Barclays, a global bank with a 300 plus year history. It's at the forefront of collaboration with startups. Barclays, they outline the big challenges in FinTech. And Techstars, we find the outliers. Now, an outlier, by definition, is not average. I hate the word average. Our founders are not average. They're extraordinary. They're outliers. Now, what you won't find here is a big group 
of Oxbridge educated ex-bankers. In fact, our founders have quite a, quite a diverse background. In fact, one of our founders used to trade scrap metal in Haiti. Another used to be a roadie for the Rolling Stones. You'll have to guess who that is. Another grew up on a dairy farm, and another one actually used to open for fish. For the deadheads in the, uh, in the audience, you'll know who fish is. What they have in common is follow through and grit. But what you need to do is meet these founders, find out their backstory, establish the dot, then the line, and maybe, maybe strike a deal. Because we're all looking for outliers. An outlier has the capacity to transform a bank like Barclays. An outlier has the capacity to make a fund. But let me tell you a dirty little secret in venture investing. Most funds don't find these outliers, or at least they don't invest in these outliers. In fact, 50% of VC funds don't return the fund. They don't return 1x. 80% of VCs, not even 2x. That's not good enough. In fact, only 6% of VC funds return 3x, which is the target that most set for themselves. But I'll tell you a little secret. On this program in London, over the last five years, we've invested in 50 companies. 94% remain in business. They've gone on to return 5x to their investors. If they were fun, <laughs> if it was a fun, it would be the upper 1%. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our outliers, the class of 2018. There is just one minute left in which we need to change the world. Some of you might struggle. But I wish you the very best of luck. You have one minute, one minute to change the world. steps. Wasn't that a fantastic video? And that's a really tough act to follow. Um, I'm Kerry Ritz. I'm one of the entrepreneurs in residence um, on this year's program. When I met Patricia from Cash Director in February, the first thing she said to me was that open banking would force banks to strengthen their relationship with customers, especially SMEs. I was impressed with her understanding of the pain felt by SMEs. They don't have full-time CFOs. They don't have the management and process tools that large companies um, have in, to run their daily business. And I was further impressed to see that Cash Director had showed banks on three continents how they could acquire new customers and make money at the same time. So I have the pleasure to introduce Patricia from Cash Director a technology solution trying to change the world of SME banking. Hi. 
I'm Patricia, co-founder of Cash Director. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've built another business, which I exited to a global player and delivered a 10-time return to investors. My business of 200 employees was doing accounting services. So I really understand the financial needs of the SMEs. 80% of them fail due to poor cash flow management. Yet they cannot afford to hire a finance manager. And banks are not really interested in debt market segment because they don't know how to make profit on it. Cash director is the solution. It's a virtual CFO based on real-time accounting distributed via banks. Let me show you how it works. Let's log in to MBank, one of the four largest banks in Poland, which has been our client for two years. Look, there is one more tab in the main menu, accounting. Let's click it. And here we are in the SME accounting system with same look and feel as the online banking. We can issue an invoice in five seconds. The system is friendly and easy to use. We can register cost invoices by sending photos of receipts. And finally, we can send payments within just a few clicks. Our virtual CFO allows us to see the cash position of our company for four weeks. And if needed, we can underwrite and deposit a loan in our accounting system within minutes. And what's important, we are not sending clients to an external platform, but we keep them within the banking environment. Our smart automated application allows the SMEs to focus on their business when we look after their finance. And through this unique offer, now the SME customers become an attractive and profitable niche for the banks. We differentiate from competition by being bank branded, real time, and free. So we can address the long tail of all the SMEs market. This is our team. We believed so strongly in this product. Then we as founders invested two and a half million euro in it. And we understand the opportunity behind it better than anyone else. Let me tell you about our traction. We have 100,000 recurring revenue monthly. And we are growing. We are live with Commerzbank and Bank for two years. And we have 60,000 users. Thanks to us, MBank was able to increase their customer acquisition by 25%. And what they discovered is that clients using Cash Director are making 90% more transactions in the online banking. Bearing in mind client lifetime value, we delivered 25 million value to MBank. We did this with one bank in one country. But in addition to Poland, we have projects going on in US, in the fast growing economies of Asia, and in Europe, where we just signed BNP Paribas. We make money by profit sharing with the banks from cross-selling lending and other financial products. 
And in five years, we plan to have 10 million users globally with $1 billion value. We'd like to talk to you if you have good contacts within the international banking and if you'd like to help us bring this fundamental change into the SME's banking. There is a massive opportunity out there. I'm Patricia from Cash Director. Thank you. Um, that title probably means um, nothing to you, so let me just explain who I am. Um, I am Josie Clapham, that's the first. Um, and I actually look after what more broadly people would understand as the retail mass market. One of those demographics actually includes international students. And I'm delighted to be here today to introduce you to Unizest, whom we have sponsored onto the programme. It's actually been a great match, and why do I say that? I say that because we have two common things. One is meeting the needs of a subsegment of customers, particularly those international students who come and fortuitously join the universities that we have and great universities that we have in the UK. And that journey we started in great partnership with Unizest. We've been working really, really closely with Unizest, and it's fair to say that part of this program, it's been about the learns, it's been about the excitement, and it's been about the dip. But actually, jointly, we have come through it a lot stronger as a partnership. And again, with that one common purpose, which is all around that international student. One thing importantly is our team have actually been sitting here working directly with Unizest. And before I introduce you to the CEO, Peter, one thing I will say is it's great to meet people who have the same passionate goal as we do and want to meet the needs of those international students. So Peter, Chris, Madalena, it's been great working with you, but before um, I leave the stage, it's delightful to introduce Peter Mull, CEO of Unizest. There are over five million international students in the world and they will all have encountered the same problem when they arrive in their study country. And that's the need to open a bank account. The process can take weeks and results in some bizarre sightings in September of every year with streams of students around the block, not for free beer or for spicy chicken wings, but outside of banks waiting for their appointments. But the problem has some severe impressions for student safety when they bring bags of cash with them, with all the problems associated with that issue. But we've solved the problem. We've solved... <laughs> OK. They bring bags of cash with them. <laughs> <laughs> with all the associated problems for, for the safety of those students, as you can see. But we've solved that problem. And what we've got is an online bank account with a Visa debit card and an integrated foreign exchange service. But the key point is that by using our unique onboarding process, those students are able to open and start using their accounts before they leave their home countries and before they get their UK address. So let's have a look at what that student journey looks like now with Unizest. At home, they get their university offer. They can now go online and open their accounts. They can then transfer local currency into sterling by using our effects service. Then they can pay for tuition or university fees, and those transactions are processed as UK to UK domestic transfers, and therefore avoid any of the complexities of international. Now, when they arrive in the country, they have their account and their card, and they can concentrate on settling into their new lives and making the most of all the other great benefits that we offer them. And when they graduate, we can stay with them as they move on into the world of work. Interesting fact, 55% of international students will stay in the country after they graduate. And it's worth noting that 60% or so of us 
will still be with the same bank that we had at university, suggesting that UniZest Uni has a real opportunity to stay with those customers for many years. So we drive revenues through account fees and affects income. Currently, £45 per account per year. But that will rise significantly to over £100 as we make planned changes to our effects service and we develop out our marketplace. In the marketplace, there are products and services from other suppliers that we offer to our students through an affiliate fee arrangement, driving additional revenues to us and significantly increasing the lifetime value of those customers. And while we're driving up our revenue, we're driving down our customer acquisition costs from 40 to 20 and below by focusing in on the most effective acquisition channels. So we launched just last year and we already have over a thousand accounts with students from 134 different countries benefiting from our service and proving that this is a truly global solution. And to deliver our global solution, we work with some key partners. About 45% of international students will apply to UK universities through UCAS. And we have a preferred supplier agreement in place with them that allows us to communicate directly with those students. In their home countries, there are educational agencies and they develop a relationship of trust with the students and their families. We've signed exclusivity with 15 of those agencies and we will have 50 by the end of 2018. And we also work with the international departments at the universities who communicate our service to their students. And finally, I'm really pleased to announce that we are working with Barclays on a pilot for 2019. Now, both Chris Donaghy, the co-founder and I, we're serial entrepreneurs with many exits under our belts. And we know the importance of a world-class team. And we have an awesome one at Unizest. We have one of the founders of the UPP group, who built that from startup to become the biggest supplier of on-campus student accommodation in the UK. We have a global educational expert who's a key opinion leader and has over 140,000 followers on Chinese social networks. And the list goes on. But what unites the whole team is our belief in this business and our <laughs> determination to make the most of this fantastic opportunity. And the opportunity is global. The Unizest account will be the go-to account for all international students as we take our service for the, to those students studying in Canada, America, Europe and Australia, opening up an addressable market of over 3 million students, spending in excess of £75 billion per annum. So, if you like our vision and you want to go with us on our journey as we build the business, raise our funding and expand our service into new territory, then we would love to talk to you. My name is Peter Miles and this is Unizest. Thank you. take the safer route to stage this time. All right, I uh, quickly want to introduce uh, something that I had a big passion about of sponsoring here in the program. I've always been interested in options trading. I think it's one of the most kind of interesting things you can do from a retail perspective out there. Uh, so when we were actually funneling in all the various different companies that were walking through the door and looking at applications, Gatsby came across the desk as one of these kind of standout ones to me. So I was very interested in the whole social aspect of options trading, the ability to simplify it from the complex beast that it is if you actually get into it and make it valuable most importantly to clients in the outside world. So that was one of the things that drew me to Gatsby from the very beginning. So with that, I'll hand it over to Jeff to talk about all the great stuff that they are doing. Hey, I'm Jeff. I'm a co-founder of Gatsby. We're making options trading simple. So it all started when I saw a video online that you guys probably saw too. It was the United Airlines passenger that was sort of violently dragged off of an overbooked flight while it was on the tarmac. But I was just 
ha I happened to be at the right place at the right time online, and I caught it when it only had 2,000 views. So I was ahead of what was pretty clearly going to become a very viral video that was going to have a huge impact on United Stock. And it did. It tanked United Stock, right? And I like to consider myself a relatively uh, financially savvy dude, but I realized I don't know how to short a company. I didn't have a, an options account. So I scrambled to Schwab to set one up, and I realized they have a, a three to five business day approval process, a, cap, a minimum capital requirement that I couldn't afford back then, uh, or now. <laughs> uh, and the UI sucked. It just wasn't designed for me. But it made me realize that options are very powerful. And they seem specifically well suited for this new generation of investors who are mostly relatively poor. And with options, you don't need as much money to create a position. Um, they, they have a, they're a little bit riskier and have a lot more leverage. And that leverage is fun and exciting. And the risk tolerance for this generation is much higher. And it's fun to short a company. It's a, it's a fun, cool concept. It's a <laughs> pessimistic generation. We like to short things and brag about it to our friends. Um, and on top of all this, it's a great time right now to be trading options. 2017 had four times the number of options contracts purchased out of the money, expiring in the money, than it had been the case in 2010. And you can probably guess why that is. Volatility. Um, so but with all these advantages, why are retail traders not touching options? And specifically among millennial traders, they're, they almost go completely underutilized. It's because they're scary. And they're intimidating, and they have a brand about them of being exclusively used by professionals. And we think that's because nobody's uh, bridged the language barrier. And it's leading millennials to turn to things that are usually totally unregulated uh, and sometimes even riskier and, and dangerous, frankly, like gambling, going to the casino, sports betting, which in America is illegal, at least for the time being, um, and crypto trading. So that's where Gatsby comes in. We're reimagining the options trading process to be much more approachable to everyday investors. And we do this in a number of ways. One, we strip out all the jargon. We don't include matrices or the Greeks. And we streamline our onboarding process so that our users can go from installing the app to funding their account and creating their first position within two minutes. We also make it social. We think that being able to see what the community around you is doing gives you a sanity check before you make investment decisions. And we also mitigate the risk. We only allow buy to open options. And we automate a lot of the trade process so that our users can feel like and, and make decisions like professional traders, even if they're somewhat new to options. And finally, we, we don't charge commissions. We think that's the new standard. Uh, millennials don't want to pay per trade anymore. So we just make money by providing liquidity to the exchanges. So our, our vision was to build a tool that lets our users do more than just tread water and keep up with inflation. We wanted them to actually be able to compete in the markets and generate profit. Uh, so our team has a ton of fintech experience. We've got a track record of building successful products and building successful companies, including one exit. And we have a deep understanding of options, thanks to a, a great advisory team. We're a pretty new company, but we've made a lot of traction in a short amount of time. We already have thousands of waitlist signups. We've been on the front page of Product Hunt. But there's one number on this slide that I'd like you to pay specific attention to. Our cost per user acquisition is under $4. And the industry standard to acquire new uh, accounts is between two and $3,000. So that's the number that's really exciting a lot of the people that we're talking to. It's scaring some of the people that we're talking to. So and just to bring it back to my experience, had I bought the put that I wanted to buy, after I saw the video, um, I would have had 400x returns. So that gives you a flavor for the amount of leverage you can have with an options contract. So we say, download the app so that you're ready for the next incident. Thank you. Uh, we're Gatsby. Come talk to us after the presentation. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, delighted to have made it up the Stacker in, uh, Memorial Step. Uh, even more delighted that Jennifer from Othello asked me to come and introduce her this afternoon. So as an M&A professional, I'm well aware of the importance of speedy and hassle-free execution. Uh, and, and it's true, legal and other industries which require this kind of level of formality and process uh, are really ripe for uh, attack and enhancement. Um, I was reminded of a story when I was a trainee solicitor, I had to get something executed, and it was one of those archaic ones where a whole company board had to all execute the same document, could be a different counterpart, but the same document on the same day. 
Uh, and I was in a position where kind of getting the execution wrong could have cost an awful lot of money. And also about 10 to midday on the day it all had to happen, uh, I noticed one of the signatures was wrong. So I picked up the phone and said, hey, can we sort this out? And the person on the other end of the phone said, no, I'm, I'm in New Zealand. Um, I've got 10 minutes to get it done. And it was a real scramble to actually get it done and executed. So really, I, I think for the right company with the right approach and the right solution, uh, there's a real opportunity to, to succeed in this space. And with that, I'd love to introduce you now to um, Jennifer. Hello, I'm Jennifer, the founder of Othello. Paperwork, signed, sealed and certified in minutes just like it should be, right? Business moves at internet speed. We can transfer billions of dollars across the globe in seconds. So why should paperwork move at medieval pace? Stamps, sales, and certificates are all very respectable objects of tradition, but these artifacts generate an enormous amount of delay for billions of transactions every year. These are the things we can do without. At Othello, we're improving access to these services with a digital solution where you can get a document notarized or certified at the touch of a button. We've built an online platform where you can connect with a database of registered legal professionals to find, book and pay for these services in minutes instead of hours, days or even weeks of delay. There are thousands of use cases, each dealt with differently on our platform. But here is one that verifies cross-border cross entities digitally, giving bank the bank complete control over client onboarding and reducing delay from six weeks to one hour at the touch of a button. I'm a qualified lawyer with over a decade of experience and the genesis for Othello comes from a deep understanding of the legal services market and a network that agree on one thing. Something meaningful has to be done about paperwork and the way legal services are dealt with in the 21st century. We started with notary services because they're a bottleneck to over 3 billion transactions every year there's instant untapped liquidity in the market. And quite frankly, they were the area most in need of help. We started in Ireland consolidating over 10% of the Irish notary market onto our platform. And since arriving in the UK, have a waitlist comprised of over 10, 15% rather of the market in London. In a short space of time, we have helped companies from leading sectors in legal and finance get documents notarized in minutes instead of hours. And this was just the beginning. With a database of users comes data and thousands of use cases. Two weeks ago, we were approached by a European bank to help process their KYC faster because our solution reduces client onboarding time from six weeks to one hour. And it's scalable. One week ago, we signed a deal to integrate with a corporate searches provider that has a global footprint to take this solution to 150 countries from one place on the web. Thank you. And we've done a similar deal with an established KYC provider in Far East Asia to reach over 20 banks there over the next 12 months. Now, it turns out that this 3 billion documents notarized per year is the tip of the iceberg in our addressable market of paperwork. So let's take a look at the value chain and see where we're going over the next 18 months. There are 3.8 billion banking customers with upwards of five signing events per year. This market is underserved with digital signing solutions and underwhelmed with service. 
a change of address for Othello Network Limited recently took over one month because the bank lost the original signed change of address forms in the post twice. A friend of mine from the biotech community who does not have the use of his hands for a wet ink signature waited three weeks for the bank to accept a proxy signatory, delaying the filing of important company documents. This is all very avoidable delay and it's entirely within our control. We started with a database of legal professionals and document certification and notary services under the highest level of scrutiny. So putting an end to these problems for the banking system and other verticals where regulation is paramount will be light work. We are on a path to reducing delay for important corporate and lifetime events from weeks to minutes, risk free. And as luck would have it, over 96% of this market is up for the taking. DocuSign told us themselves in their recent IPO prospectus. I'm Jennifer, we are Othello. Come talk to us later to help tackle the things we can do without and take the work out of paper for good. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Conde. I started my own company a long time ago, it, and we were the typical SME, underserved. We couldn't get a financial services professional to pay any attention to us, especially in insurance. We couldn't get the attention of an insurance agent. My company grew. It became SunGuard, a Fortune 500 company, and then I had plenty of bankers that wanted to do all kinds of things for me, uh, way too many. But from a public policy standpoint, it's SMEs that drive the economy. It's SMEs that, that hire. It's SMEs that, that combat unemployment and uh, grow the economy. So that's why I was so interested to team up with Fleming and Nimbla, because they're addressing the needs of the SME. They're offering what I should have gotten a long time ago. Fleming and Nimbla. The pressure is on for SMEs in these uncertain times. So far this year, we've seen over two billion pounds of losses to unsecured creditors from just three names, Carillion, Maplins, and Toys R Us. Last year, the total figure was 6.6 .6 billion pounds. So it's going to be a bad year. And the companies least able to absorb these losses are SMEs. 50,000 of them go under every year due to cash flow problems. Yet, for a B2B business, trade credit is a way of life. You simply cannot do business without it. The risks are obvious, yet the products designed to protect them simply do not fit. £6,000, that's the average cost of an insurance policy to cover a small company. We're bringing the price of insurance from £6,000 down to £6. Let me give you some examples. This is one of our customers. They're an engineering firm in the West Midlands. Now, they've had some experiences with bad debt before, but 90% of their customers are blue chip, and they're not worried about them. They come to our platform every week and simply insure the invoices that they are worried about. But the story that I really love is how insurance can be a driver for growth. Another customer of ours, now they're a furniture manufacturer in the northeast of England, and they've also had some experience of bad debt. So they asked for cash up front, pro forma. Now their typical order is around five to 10,000 pounds, but they recently won a huge order of £100,000. But of course, the customer demanded credit. That customer was another SME. And if they went under, 
they would drag our clients down with them. We insured the invoices and they got the deal done. We're, as you can see, we're integrated with all the major cloud accounting platforms. You simply sync, you select the invoices that you want to insure, add them to the basket, check out, and the policy is delivered directly to your inbox. It's fast, it's flexible, and it's affordable. We're proud to have one of the biggest names in insurance behind us, Munich Re. They underwrite the risk, we take a percentage of premium, and we share in profits above a given loss ratio. We launched in the FCA sandbox last year and quickly sold out of all of our policies. We launched our broker app last week, and we have 10 brokerages lined up eager to sell policies. So we distribute direct through brokers, but also through API. We have a proof of concept with Satago, an invoice discounting platform, to embed our insurance into their platform. And we have eight more API integrations in the pipeline, ranging from cloud accounting to banking apps. Through the accelerator, we've been working with Barclays. We ran focus groups with their clients and client relationship managers. We've got a data sharing agreement, which will help us calibrate our risk model. And finally, we're working with Barclay Card to improve payments technology. We provide commercial micro-insurance that's deliverable into anyone's native application. And the data that we collect helps us score companies better, especially SMEs. That, in turn, helps us deliver better products and better pricing for us and for our partners. My name is Fleming Bengtsson. I'm the CEO of Nimbler, and our vision is to let SMEs focus on running their business and trade with confidence. My name is uh, Anthony Brown. I was Chief Executive of the British Bankers Association 2012 to 2017. I spent five years leading uh, the negotiations for the banking industry on the whole regulatory reform in the wake of the financial crisis. Every day, I'd speak to chairmen, chief executives, finance directors, chief risk officers of banks, big banks, small banks, uh, UK banks, foreign banks, um, challenger banks. And they talked about a lot of things. They said a lot of good things. They grumbled about a lot of things as well, about politicians, about the media, about the coffee at the Bank of England. But there was one thing above all that they all grumbled about, which was compliance. It was their biggest headache. Uh, they uh, grumbled about the cost of it, the time it was taking, the number of people they had to employ. They couldn't get the staff to do uh, all the compliance. And this was really brought home to me when I had uh, lunch with one international bank CEO. He had 800 staff in London, 200 of them were doing compliance, one quarter of his staff, and that was pure cost. And that's why I'm so excited about the next company, uh, Audit uh, Extra. They have in used the power of AI to develop a solution for automating compliance, to get to drive down the cost. They are, if you like, the, the codeine of the compliance headache. Please give a big welcome to the founder and CEO of Audit Extra, Dr. Bimal Bamu. Good afternoon, everybody. $1.45 trillion. That's a lot of money, right? But that's what financial services companies are going to spend on audit and compliance by 2020. It's one of their biggest costs and certainly one of their biggest legal risks. Our mission is to use artificial intelligence to automate audit and compliance, slashing costs and taking away the pain. My name is Dr. Bimal Roy Banu. I'm co-founder, audit expert, and CEO. Audit and compliance as a process hasn't changed in the last century. It's still a very manual, time-consuming, costly, and risky process. 
Let me, let me give you an example. JP Morgan last year spent $2 billion on audit and compliance, employing 13,000 people. But that's not the worst aspect of it. Despite all this investment, they paid $20 billion in fines. The whole process of audit and compliance naturally leads to fines. Billions and billions of dollars in fines. You hear it every day almost in the news. And people forget one thing, always forget this, that it's individual directors that are culpable for non-compliance. So why is this? Any of you that's familiar with the industry will know that key decisions around risk are made on sampling. For example, one of the companies they're working with told us that out of every 50,000 customers, they look at 25 customers to do sure compliance. That's 0.05%, which meaning they're really blind or guessing on another 99.95%. This is where we come in. We've spent six years working with clients, getting user feedback to produce an intuitive platform that uses a combination of, multi, of propriety artificial intelligence technology to create a platform which is quick and easy to learn. Anybody can pick it up in 10 minutes. It learns as, a, as though you were an apprentice. You can teach it, but exponentially. It reduces the cost and the time to do compliance by 90%. And above all, above all, it gets rid of sampling. Sampling is history. Through our system, it is very simple. I've got some good news to share with you guys today, which is we've just closed a, a deal for three and a half million pounds with a leading digital bank to deliver KYC and AML services using our unique technology. This takes us into 46 countries doing KYC AML on 8.5 million customers and 90,000 merchants. But this is just the beginning. Our aim is to, to totally revolutionize audit and compliance. We can now get companies, allow companies to look at 100% of their customer base as opposed to 0.05%. We can reduce compliance costs by 90%. But more importantly, we reduce the time and effort that currently required from weeks and months to simply minutes to do what you want to do. And no more sampling. So why are we different? I know everybody says this, but this is really comes down to the team. And I don't mean this bunch of characters over here. Yes, we have 20 years of experience in audit and compliance, but it is our technology team which is outstanding. We have three PhDs, 11 technical developers with masters, two relationships with universities that's helping us to do R&D, all of which gives us the tools and the skills to address this problem. And it is a massive problem, a massive problem. The opportunity is huge. In addition to the three and a half million pound that I just referred to in terms of engagement, we're in the middle of two POCs with Barclays around customer onboarding and compliance with FCA, automating both sets. We're in advanced discussions with three banks in Southeast Asia and the US for the use of our technology, and also working with two of the big four to automate audit. As you can see, we are growing aggressively, incredibly, particularly over the last three months. So I have one ask of all of you. We're hiring. We're looking for great people from audit and compliance to join our team to join our journey to automate and revolutionize audit and compliance. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Nishal Sapiria. I was uh, one of the guys who built a company called Market, now IHS Market. Um, when I had the pleasure of meeting Maggie and the team, I was familiar with click fraud. But I wasn't aware of all the different ways that people are hacking ad tech today. I sat with them for about half an hour, and I sat there and I thought, wow, I really should have been an ad tech hacker. Then I sat down with them a bit more, and then I got to know the technology, and I thought, damn, thank God I didn't become an ad tech hacker. With that, I want to introduce Maggie from DevCon. Thank you.
was the last time you stopped to pick a penny up off the street? Probably never. But I want you to imagine New York Times Square filled with $19 billion worth of pennies. That's the size of the online ad fraud problem this year alone. And it's happening in pennies. Online advertising is transacting in micro payments. Online ads are micro transactions. And they're happening every minute, every second, billions of times a day, often by nameless, faceless entities. And those entities are then laundering this money into the global banking system, making this ad tech problem, a fintech problem. It's a banking problem. Good afternoon, I'm Maggie Louie, CEO and co-founder of DevCon. We started this company after I caught a hacker who had stolen an estimated million dollars from the industry. We wanted to stop criminals, so we started DevCon. And just last month, we actually helped win the first ever conviction for ad fraud, resulting in a four-year prison sentence and total payment of the stolen funds. It's a massive win for the industry. And when this news broke, the vice president of Cox Media Group sent me this email. And we don't need our own show on Netflix. Um, but uh, I think this illustrates exactly how huge the appetite for justice is. And there are companies just like Cox who will pay us for it. Because in lo just last year, this was a $9 billion problem, but it's growing to be a $44 billion problem in just a short time frame, and that's, that's massive. That's a massive problem. How is it even happening? How is it growing that fast? It's happening because those charged with looking for fraud and money laundering, cybersecurity experts, don't know anything about online advertising. They don't know ad ops, and they don't know ad tech. And ad, ad tech people and ad ops folks aren't being taught to look for money laundering. They don't know cybersecurity. So this is flying completely under the radar of both industry and government. DevCon, with our platform and with our 15 years of combined dual domain expertise, can stop this. Before starting DevCon, I spent 10 years developing digital products for the Los Angeles Times, EW Scripps, and American Public Media. And I know this industry inside and out. And my co-founder and CTO, Josh Summit, has more than a decade as a cybersecurity expert. And he's worked for the IRS. He led the ethical hacking team for Bank of America, and he also Worked for Kevin Mitnick, literally the world's most notorious hacker. Let me show you DevCon, the SaaS platform powerful enough to catch fraud and stop criminals. And we're doing this remotely, zero integration. We know the authorized account numbers, and we can identify the potential fraudulent ones, and we can trace them across the entire network of publishers that they're attacking, back to an original account number and an original server distributing them. And we can notify our customers, law enforcement, and network providers immediately, stopping this criminal activity in minutes, not days and hours. And we can restore revenue back to the legitimate companies and not criminals. We started with just one publisher, and we've already grown that to 11 enterprise-wide, three of which are Fortune 500 companies. And we're working now with brands, agency, and advertisers because they understand this is an industry crisis. And we've just begun POCs with government, banks, and auditors. Because like us, they understand that this is not just an ad tech problem. This is a banking problem. And it's not just at an operational level. This is a board problem. We sit at the intersection of cybersecurity and big data. And there has been plenty of M&A activity in this space. In just the last two years, there have been three major deals. But I want to go back to this $44 billion in pennies, because it's still $44 billion. And since we've been here today, the industry has lost $6 million to ad fraud. And by the end of today, that's going to grow to $51 million today in ad fraud losses. Advertisers don't want to be robbed. Publishers and agencies don't want to be blamed. And banks don't want to be complicit. But $44 billion worth of theft can't go unaddressed. DevCon is the solution. We're intelligent software, powerful enough to stop crime. Please come see us afterwards, and together we can change this future. I'm Maggie Louie, CEO of DevCon. Thank you.
So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ben Davey, and I'm the CEO of Barclays UK Ventures. And it's my great pleasure to introduce Adam St. John, CEO of Citata. Now, I was playing football yesterday, and uh, I'm not particularly mal-coordinated, but I did manage to impale myself on a corner flag, which is why I'm a little bit sensitive standing up here today. Now, you may say, what's the point of that? And it's probably beyond the call of duty, but this is the point of Citata. Because you never know when the unexpected is going to hit you, and you certainly don't know when you may need help. So uh, to draw that together, at Barclays, we're always striving to deepen the trust and confidence of our customers. And that involves doing more than just providing simple uh, banking products. As some of you may know, we already have an outreach program, uh, uh, text-based. Uh, and so, for example, the recent Barcelona uh, event uh, we were able to text all of our customers uh, within a four-hour radius of Barcelona to check whether or not they were in need of assistance. The response that we've had to that program has been off the charts. And that's where Citata comes in and why I was particularly pleased to be able to sponsor them through this program. Because at the heart of Citata is a mission, which is all about keeping our customers, their customers, out of harm's way. And working with them, I am highly confident that we are going to produce a better service for our clients. And therefore, without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce Adam St. John, CEO of Citata. Ten years ago, I was on a bus traveling through Southeast Asia. I was stuck on it all day long, and when I jumped off starving, I ate the first thing I saw on the side of the road, a street meat delight. Worst mistake ever. I wound up with crippling food poisoning for over four straight days, and just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Adam, and I'm CEO of Citata. I can laugh at it now, but at the time, it wasn't funny. I was stuck in a foreign place where I couldn't speak the language and I needed help. But it's not just about getting sick. Imagine missing the deal of a lifetime because a transit strike shuts down the entire city. Millions of travelers face similar situations every year. In fact, of the 1.2 billion international tourists, 20% seek help when abroad. Yet to this day, mobile technology absolutely fails at preventing these situations and there's nothing to address them when they occur. Citata keeps you safe when you travel. We started with prevention because now with modern technology we have an efficient means to keep people out of harm's way. We use machine learning to monitor the world for travel disruptions, events like a disease outbreak, violent protest, or simply a tube strike, and we deliver this critical information to travelers on the ground faster than anyone else. Citata was the first to bring these capabilities to the leisure travel sector. And although our own app has gotten attention from the likes of New York Times and Wired Magazine, we're actually focused on larger distribution opportunities. We created a white label and approached the travel insurance sector. But why travel insurers? Because they're struggling. Travel insurers have zero differentiation and super low retention rates. They pay massive commissions to their channel partners, and above all else, they're desperate to reduce their number one cost, medical claims. So Citata is a no-brainer for travel insurers. We help them provide an ongoing service which boosts their retention rates. With our data, they can better price their risk. And we help prevent medical claims. We positively boost every aspect of their P&L. Today, travel insurers pay us for our white-labeled services. We're helping this stale $20 billion industry become more profitable, and along the way, creating an opportunity that could generate hundreds of millions for Citata. Late last year, we launched with Travel Insured International, a top US player that brings our service to over half a million travelers every year. It's going so well that their parent company, Fairfax, wants to roll us out to more of their companies in Australia, India, and Hong Kong. In the short time that we've been here, we've managed to sign two more insurers, and we've built our sales pipeline to more than $3 million. But I'm most excited to announce today that we're working toward a pilot with Barclay Card. Barclays is interested in Citata because we can help keep their card out of wallet and retain customers. Barclays in the UK alone has more than 10 million credit card holders. And guess what? Credit cards capture the world's majority of travel spending. It's an absolutely massive distribution opportunity for us. 
But our vision goes beyond simple prevention. We're creating a channel of trust for travelers. With our technology, you'll be able to connect with someone that can help you who speaks your language, whether it's a local doctor, your embassy, or simply an assistance center. Our team has more than 30 years of software, machine learning, and travel industry experience. From the man who created the world's first digital disease surveillance network to a former APAC head of travel insurance at Zurich, it's a strong team with a rare blend of skills and experience, and as you've now heard, it's bearing fruit. Our mission is to put Satata in the hands of travelers everywhere. With Satata in their pocket, they can feel safe, connected by a lifeline no matter where they are. Our solution, it's infinitely scalable, and with the opportunities ahead of us, we're well on our way to going global. So we're looking for friends and partners who share our vision. If that's you or you'd just like to have a chat, please come speak to me. My name's Adam, and this is Satata. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Um, my name is Bruno Mailer. I'm the head of mortgage products and propositions for Barclays in the UK. So we are a very established lender in a very established industry, which is mortgages. But we not only are striving to try and continue to serve the hundreds of thousands of customers that comes to us on an annual basis for our new mortgages, but we want to bring innovation. And this is where Keybot was introduced to us at Barclays. How can we bring innovation to the mortgage market, particularly the buy to let segment, where landlords struggled with time to provide uh, their tenants with a viewing and the automation of the property. So I was introduced first to Keybot and to Divyash, which I will introduce you in a second. And we saw that not only was an opportunity for us in the small landlord market, but also for the large property managers that are here in the UK and across the globe. I am delighted to introduce you to Divyash, a great entrepreneur that's got a great history behind him. And we'll talk a bit more about Keybot. Thank you. My name is Devesh Panchal. I'm co-founder and CEO of the Keybot. Over the last 10 years, my wife and I have built a portfolio of 200 rental properties in St. Louis. I have lived through the pain of managing rental properties. Every day, my estate agent and property manager spend many hours in car driving around town to show property to renters and giving access to third-party contractors. It gets worse when renters need to move in or out or lose keys. It's an absolute nightmare. 15% of my cost is tied to everyday access management when including hard cost and labor cost. To solve this problem, my team and I built Keybot. Keybot is a smart rental access solution. Meet Adam. Adam is a property manager with hundreds of properties under management. And Alicia needs to see one of the rental properties that Adam has in the market. Adam can create a key right from his office. Alicia gets the text, and all she needs to do is take a selfie and a picture of her driver license. Keybot will verify her identity by matching those two images. Now, Alicia can use her phone as a key, or she can use one-time usable PIN code. And when Alicia decides to move in, well, she can control log just like Adam. And just like Alicia, Adam can now give one-time access to the plumber, electrician, and handyman. And the best part is, Adam did not need any internet connection at his rental property for Keybot to work. Keybot is built on internationally patent pending technology. Keybot is easy to install and offers full API for third party integration. Our team comes from diverse background and really passionate about solving this problem. I've spent 15 years in technology working for Fortune 500 companies. Collectively, we have over 30 years of experience in real estate 
and over 25 in software and hardware. KeyBot is a combination of proprietary lock, software, and business processes. Real estate specific business processes integrated to solve the problem for residential rental property management. Well, why residential rental property management? Because it's a massive opportunity. There are 100 million rental properties between Western Europe and US. And at present, we are focused on the segment that is professionally managed rentals. We sell directly to B2B customers with at least 1,000 properties under management. We make money not only when we sell Keybot, but also on a monthly subscription basis. Over the last 45 days alone, we have pre-sold over $3 million worth of Keybot, and we have $6 million in the pipeline. Recently, a customer signed up, and they are really excited about Keybot. They have 1,600 properties scattered throughout the town in St. Louis. And they are finally going to be able to double the number of properties they manage without having to add a single maintenance crew on the ground. Our mission is to open doors for everyone. And if you can help us open some doors, we would love to hear from you afterwards. Thank you. Way. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Ed Black. I am Director of Innovation and Product at Barclay Card Payment Solutions. Um, absolutely delighted to be introducing crowds today, so much so, as you can see, I've got the t-shirt. Starting to worry, I'm going a little bit native maybe. Um, so we've been working with the crowds team for uh, several months now and we're incredibly impressed by their, their knowledge and expertise in the market that they're operating in. Um, the B2B supply chain market is completely untapped, and I think it's completely ripe for innovation and disruption, which is why we're so excited about this opportunity. Um, I think by bringing together um, what we've got, which is scale, um, distribution, and a very large book of SMEs and corporates, and putting that together with the crowd's capabilities and some of the innovation that they're working on, and we've got a really powerful commercial opportunity in front of us. Um, in my line of work, basically, we're, we're help, trying to help companies sell stuff and trying to help companies buy stuff. And that's exactly what the Crowds technology does. So without further ado to him or about it, let me introduce Payson Johnson from Crowds. One hundred years ago, my family imported product in and out of China, as you can see from this actual photograph. It was a highly manual process with a ton of paperwork. Today, China, the manufacturing capital of the world, has embarked on a $1 trillion project called One Belt, One Road. This ambitious program is recreating the ancient silk trade routes to move even more product throughout Asia into all of Europe across 77 different countries. However, there's a glaring omission with China's program. The paperwork is still very manual, and my family from 100 years ago would still recognize it. Let me make this a little bit more concrete. Take the chair that most of you are sitting in. This chair was purchased by the Barclays Purchasing Department for about 238 pounds, list price, of course. Now, look at the chair for a minute. It's made of plastics. Do you realize it rocks forward? Try, try rocking it for a second. OK. So it rocks forward, right? Now, let me tell you a little bit about this chair. This chair was bought by a, from a reseller named Aram. That reseller got it from a Swiss designer who manufactured it in Germany. But the plastics for this chair came from mainland China, and the raw materials from throughout Asia. This sounds like a rather complicated process, and it is. In fact, 300 documents across 20 companies were needed to make this very chair you're sitting in today. With crowds, we digitize and accelerate the process for making this chair and millions of other products. We also allow sellers to get better working capital by selling back and financing their invoices. 
Think of this cache as a lubricant for the Silk Road. The product catalog and the paperwork is now digital. The paperwork can move across along with the invoice across the blockchain. And the invoice can be put up for auction where banks and hedge funds can bid for a market rate. Bottom line, SMEs, small medium enterprises flourish while global trade across the Silk Road thrives. Let me walk you through a demo. If I was from the Barclays purchasing department, I could start searching for this gray office chair. I could narrow it down to different resellers, setting different parameters, and eventually find this chair that you're sitting on from the reseller, ARAM. Now, ARAM can actually, the seller can actually send the invoice through the system, goes across the blockchain, and as you can see, 90 days they receive payment. But basically now they could put it up for auction and different banks can bid so you can get a fair price. In this case, Sumitomo Bank wins and transfers the money over to ARAM. Now, ARAM can now manage their supply chains and their cash without mountains of paperwork. We also worked with Google X to develop a smart score to look at credit risk from every buyer and seller. So how do we make money on this? We make money in three ways. Number one, we make money from the product selling on the marketplace. Number two, we make money for the invoice and the finance fee when it's auctioned off. And number three, we make money from data analytics, selling it to insurance companies, businesses, and governments. We've got traction, 1.5 million products on our beta. We've launched a POC with South Korea's POSCO. We've signed two POCs with big industrial players in China. And what we've done in Asia, we're now bringing to Europe in partnership with Barclays. We're focused on the furniture industry, which is actually the bulkiest item on the Silk Road. My team understands supply chains. Severo and I, my CTO, built out Cisco's e-commerce system that allowed Cisco to digitize from raw materials up into final distribution to customers. We understand how commerce works. We're addressing the legacy problems on the Silk Road today. However, our vision doesn't stop there. Just like the internet became the backbone for e-commerce, crowds will become the backbone for all global commerce. We look forward to partnering with you on this $9 trillion opportunity. So what do you guys think? Pretty good? Yeah. OK, so I don't want to be on the stage by myself any longer than I have to, because the real stars are our founders. So I'd like to invite everyone to come on stage with me who spoke today. So first of all, I'd like to just, uh, there's, a, there's a fair few people we have, to, we have to thank today. So the first group of people are the uh, Techstars Global Network Sponsors. Uh, these are companies that work with Techstars companies all over the world. Uh, they're instrumental, instrumental in making this program a great success. So I just want to say thank you to everyone on this slide. OK, uh, there's a lot of people that go into making this program great. Um, and there's two people within Barclays I'd like to uh, shout out to in particular, and that's Charlotte and Mark. Uh, they're fantastic, uh, I mean, fantastic teammates at Barclays and, and great friends for us. So uh, thank you, Charlotte and Mark. I think some programs run with entrepreneurs and residents. Um, I didn't focus like a founder, and I didn't choose one. I chose three, because um, when you have three amazing EIRs, you're just going to say yes. So I'd just like to say thank you to Anthony Brown, Kerry Ritz, and Tara Khan for being fantastic EIRs.
Now, I think most of you will recognize this graffiti. It's nothing by Banksy. It's actually our mentor wall, which is upstairs. And if you were a mentor on this program, you were invited to sign it. Uh, we ran with over 100 Techstars mentors and nearly the same in, in Barclays, Barclays mentors. And, and it's the mentors that make this program what it is. And today is really about, um, you know, it's a showcase for you. Um, so I just really want to say thank you to the mentors and thank you on behalf of all the companies. Uh, you've, you've given us uh, you know, your time, your network, and you've really helped make these good companies great. Okay, there's, uh, there's eight faces uh, on the right of that slide. These, these people are associates. Uh, they are Techstars employees, but they work for the companies. Uh, and as of today, they are probably the, the eight hottest job hire prospects because they're all, they're done, right? So they're available to be hired. Now, a lot of these um, will be, uh, will be uh, going after by the actual companies on this program, uh, but they are just absolutely critical for this program to function. You know, the teams we work with here are not 100-person operations, so these eight people are, are absolute linchpins. So I just want to say thank you to our associates. Uh, next, Fabio. Fabio Mafioli. So a grazie to Fabio, right? Um, so Fabio is the, uh, uh, the program manager for this program. Uh, he's, he joined literally a week before program. He had a lot to learn, but did an incredible job. Uh, it's been fantastic working with him, and uh, I hope he stays a long time. So thanks, Fabio. Okay, now on to important business. All right, so there's a party, right? And um, there is a sufficient amount of money behind the bar. Uh, so we hope to use it and then some. Uh, this is for, for everyone at this event. Um, and it is being actually broadcast live on YouTube, so it's, it's not for you, um, <laughs> because you know these things get out of hand. Um, but um, for, for everyone that's, that's, that's here today or, or has been a mentor in the program, please join us at 6.30. It's a five minute walk away. Uh, it would be fantastic to, to bring, take this, uh, this party into the evening. Um, so take a photo or remember, uh, it's called Strong Room. It's in Shoreditch. Uh, please, please join us. No. Okay, um, next steps before I introduce you back to John. Um, it doesn't end now. Um, everyone here should be walking upstairs up the, uh, uh, the stairway there to meet the companies. So the whole, the whole idea here was about to meet the companies, establish the relationship, get the backstory, find out who was the roadie at the Rolling Stones, right? And, um, you know, create that proof point and maybe, maybe do something with them in the future. So take the time, go meet the founders. Um, and at this point, I'd just like to introduce you back over to John Stecker for some final thoughts. Thank you. All right. Yes, I will wrap up quickly because I want to get people upstairs and then off to drinks, which is always the most important thing for why most people show up. Thanks, for the, thanks to the Techstars folks. You guys always do a great job supporting us, helping out the program, amazing work in general. So much appreciation for it. Uh, look forward to partnering up in the Tel Aviv one that is coming up here, as well as New York at the end of the year. So there's lots of great stuff going on. Continue this kind of uh, in perpetuity in the future. So thank you very much for all the help. Um, thank you for you guys putting in all of the backbreaking work and going through all of the hell that sometimes I think sometimes happens over the 13 weeks. Uh, much appreciated. Being from the States, I didn't get to see you guys all the time and the work and the effort that you put in. But it's amazing being here like the first week that you guys were here and seeing what it came into. So awesome job in general. Um, kudos goes out to all the mentors as well for all the help getting folks here. So awesome work in general. So one more round of applause for them. And then lastly today, thank you for everybody coming out, uh, watching online, taking time out of your day. Uh, I know it is a commitment to get away from the desk. Maybe not too much of a commitment, depending on how much you love your job. Um, but like in general, I know it takes effort to get out and to just make the trek down here. So thank you very much for hanging out. T make use of the time upstairs, meet the companies. They're all awesome people beyond their companies in general. So take the time just to say hi to them. Um, and then make sure you meet us later on for drinks. So with that, we'll wrap it up. Thanks a lot, everybody.